So about part three. Where do we even begin? The series has been going so well with things looking bright in Tokyo. We got human and ghoul a beard under circumstances. We got the Q squad back together at last. And finally, Kaneki is out of his slumber. Those are the ingredients for a pleasant ending. Hell, I was ready for the arc to close with a good ending and a triumphant return to happy life. I was a damn fool to even think about it. It's too good to be true as they all say. This chapter had me broken, confused, and shocked to see how it begins to fall into pieces. The last chapter had me floored with tense emotion from Toka's struggle and determination. Naturally, I rooted for her to retrieve Kaneki by any means necessary. And with the help of Q-Squad, it made it so special. You would think Kaneki would wake up eventually and sees Toka around the same time she finds him. Instead, it's a disturbingly haunting image of his body. It could disturb people with his hole on the chest region, deep display of emptiness with that one shot, and what tops it to me is his left eye open, showing lifeless sign. He looks dead. Is he though? I don't think so. But it is eerie on how the imagery paints Q-Squad and Toka have to carry a distracting figure body. The difference of reaction is clearly significant. People celebrate that they found Kaneki in which Dragon will vaporize. Yet when the news broke out about him being lifeless, they still celebrate like it's all good news. Hida's reaction says otherwise. People often selfishly think one part matters and nothing more. I understand they don't know Kaneki, but the sign of importance differs greatly. At the very least, they are still tasked to retrieve Kaneki for further analysis. The reaction from Q-Squad and Toka stung me severely. The first couple of pages have them quietly look at Kaneki like we have been restarting the first reaction. It's mainly due to how stunned they truly are, creating the sensation close to home with the realism of a person's reaction. The mission was to find Kaneki. They should be happy that they found him. So why does it feel like they lost? It's mind numbing. I do like the small moment with Muski still trying to make up for her past action. Since they were quietly cutting the surrounding of the body, she let Uri know that it was her fault that Aura got twisted in the first place. At least she is willing to take the blame for that as well. Uri, however, just doesn't have the time to process the thoughts with everything going grim, even when succeed. The page of him removing the body is such a grim and sorrow tone feeling. Uri is freeing his old mentor. There's a last hurdle they have to deal with, but it does provide a nice teamwork from Kaneki's beloved people. It's rather tense with Dragon going out of his way to keep them together so they got them all worked up with Psycho ready to protect Uri and Toka. They do make a really good team. I would like to see them all work together under different circumstances. Uri is great as ever with his quick reaction and plan to retrieve the body. The one part that got me puzzled, really puzzled, that is until the ending which we'll get to that very soon is Psycho. Dragon didn't aim to attack her with his Kagane, but instead it randomly exploded and shoots out spores. What terrified me is how it injected to her Kagane and suddenly she has two Kakugan. Not to mention she kneels down in pain. What happened? We'll get to that soon. The mission is over and Dragon is vaporizing. The sad part is Kimi and all the other people that know Kaneki aren't celebrating. The atmosphere is incredibly dreary. It's like watching a funeral or a tragic ending ongoing process. It's uncomfortable to see Kaneki all wrapped around like a body bag. That's the point of this chapter. Not once I was relieved or happy while reading this chapter. There's no sense of accomplishment. You win some. You lose some. I felt like we lost the main game. 
Had the chapter ended there, I would have been satisfied for Mindy. Granted, I would have been broken to see how it played out, but for the content and his delivery, it would have been outstanding. Then, we got the Grandmaster of Twists. We are going to full analysis mode with this part of the review, but I will comment on the whole twist. It does answer many questions, yet it leaves many new ones. Mainly, what does this all mean on some regards? The big twist begins with Furuta reprising his role as a sneaky bastard, along with V organization and find a giant egg shaped thing somewhere in 19th Ward. It hatches. And then, the Megaton Bomb is dropped. What awakens from it is Rize, Furuta's precious dragon. In other words, Kaneki wasn't the dragon that we all thought. He was only a vessel for this particular creation. I had to read this a couple of more times as well as rereading the previous chapters. What I got is confusion, but amazed by all the clues that were spread out all this time. That said, I can now conclude that Furuta is a fucking mad man. For those who were wondering about Furuta's main goal, that may be answered entirely in the next chapter. However, I can't pinpoint that it made sense on how and why this even happened. When you recall Kaneki and Furuta's meeting back in chapter 101, it all revolved with Rize. Even that subtle hint of his main target has and always will be her. Furuta only mentioned once about dragon that aimed towards Kaneki. Or so we were left to believe. It's not a moment of Ishida changing his mind, it's our thought process that fell for it. While Furuta could have predicted Dragon's reaction to be this devastating, it didn't matter to him because he knows that his precious will be waiting. To make things easier, no one is focusing outside of the area of Dragon's location. Therefore, no one will be disturbing the egg. That's why his plan went smoothly once Dragon was created. This is probably why Furuta had that nucleus, for this purpose most likely. I called him a madman because it clearly comes with a great price that he has no care to pay for. It turns out that the 19th war is undergoing through an awful process of change. People are becoming a ghoul. People are losing their mind, eating their friends or family, or even feeling sick. All because Furuta wants to bring Rize back to life in a way that we didn't expect. If this is the price to create Dragon, then my god, that's madness. That would mean Connor knew this would occur as well. Die with glee? What a monster. This connects with those kids from the 24 ward underground. That's why they act like human. They were human before. The sickening part is if everyone turns into a ghoul. How they would survive if there's no human flesh? Eating a ghoul is still harmful because not only they will lose their mind eventually, a la Kagaja, but it still boils down to cannibalism. They're going to either wipe out humanity or die from starvation. The saddest part is Psycho is the prime example. One will be a bit confused on what just happened to her earlier. The last bit while being subtle and yet to explain the symptom connects to her and the connection I got is that she has become a ghoul. A full-fledged ghoul. That's messed up. It's not even on her own will. Yet it spread to her like a virus. I don't want to see her reaction of never able to eat normal food again. That's going to be such a heartbreaking unless they go to time skip and skip that part. For the love of God, do that route. The perplexing part is the V organization aligning with Furuta in this experiment. I thought they would go out there and destroy Dragon, but not this time. Exactly what did they do with the first Dragon victim? They seem fine with this one apparently. Could it be that the first dragon was their idea but a failed one, hence they had to get rid of it? Was it natural that they had to get rid of it but thought it was interesting, which led Furuta to utilize the plan? What is their agenda? 
As for Rize, is this the real one or a newly created self? If the latter, was his plan have to do with creating a new life rather than bringing it back? Does this mean Rize, who talked to Kaneki earlier, was actually her, not the imagination? That could explain on why she appeared out of all times. It's no wonder Kaneki didn't understand her presence. Could it be possible that the nucleus has to do something with her? Something tells me the original is dead. Now, we have a new one. I do believe a lot of questions will be answered in the next chapter. Otherwise, we'd be so lost in what just happened. This chapter was very interesting in many ways. It begins with a tragic and eerie vibe of defeat despite the mission was a success. The twist is mind-numbing yet brilliant and what got me fooled to focus solely on Kaneki and nothing outside of him. If people didn't remain focused on Kaneki, they probably would have seen something bizarre and evilly twisted. This hellhole is not ending anytime soon. Share your confusion, your questions, your thoughts in the comments. This is going to be a long week. There's so much to talk about. I try not to go too deep and that's why the last part of the review is all analysts to understand how this even happened. Regardless, a lot of questions should be answered in the next chapter. I'm hoping for that. It's astounding. Truly amazing when you look back and see all the pieces coming together. It's amazing. Just amazing. And that will do it for the review. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you like this and want more of this, subscribe to my channel and my world will be yours to stay. Until next time, take care.